Hello, Saints. Today we're going to be finishing up our study of 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6. So we'll be wrapping up uh, 1 Timothy, then we'll go for next month, we'll start into the study of, of 2 Timothy. I want to just thank all of those and wish that have faithfully, you know, attended your Bible study classes and did your studies and your homework. Uh, today I don't plan to spend uh, much time on, on this study, but I'm going to sign you uh, an assignment when we get uh, finished, and I'd like to have all of you uh, to participate in that uh, for our next uh, meeting on Wednesday at, at during our 7.30 uh, Zoom uh, class. So um, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Let us bow our heads as we go to our God in prayer. Uh, Father God, we, we humbly come before your throne of mercy and grace, and Lord God, we, we thank you for how you have uh, blessed us and how you provided for us and looked over us. Lord God, I just thank you how you blessed my family and just helping uh, those that have been sick, Janice and Ivana, to uh, recover and come through this virus. And Father God, I pray and ask that you just continue to help them in this recovery process, that they will uh, uh, get their full health and strength back and that there's no uh, residual or long-term effects from that. Oh, Lord God, we pray and we ask that you help uh, us as we study your word to understand what your will is for our lives and that as we read your word and we study it, we, we absorb it in such a way that we apply the very teachings to our daily walk of life. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Strengthen us where we all stand in our own individual needs. For it's in your son, Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Again, we're going into uh, the final study of uh, uh, chapter six uh, in, um, in, in, in our Bibles. And this portion, the author, as well as the Bible, he, uh, he, he talks about God's servants must flee, follow, and fight. And so if you would, let me share my screen. Okay, and this this chapter was about faithful things, uh, things a faithful minister must teach and do. But you know, as a as a child of God, even though the this is Paul's writing to Timothy, an evangelist, telling him things in which that he must do. But you know, there isn't much different from what a a servant of the Lord uh, must do uh, versus any other. A Christian, any other individual that have committed themselves to serving the Lord. You know, all of God's servants should flee those things that are inappropriate, those things that are not right, and they should follow out the righteousness, godliness, uh, um, uh, faithfulness, and they should fight a good fight of faith. And so that's what Paul is encouraging Timothy uh, to do. And again, I'm encouraging all of us as members in the Lord's church that we do the same thing. Today, I'm going to take the approach. I'm just going to read through uh, the, the last 10 verses may provide a, a little uh, explanation. And again, I don't plan to be very long. And then I'm going to sign you an assignment for this week. Well, when we look at um, the 11th verse, uh, Paul tells Timothy, he said, but you, O man of God, he's a servant of the Lord. Flee these things. What things is he talking about? He's talking about all those things he just spoke to him about. He talked about, you know, um, godliness is a, is a means of gain, which is a false philosophy. Flee those things. Men in which that, that, that have a love for money and, and pursue money. Um, flee those things. But when we flee one thing, we need to make sure that we're pursuing something uh, in place of that. And so he says, pursue, run out, the, get your hands on righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. I'm reminded of this um, the scripture, there's one of the parables that Jesus taught in Matthew, the 12th chapter, and it was about how uh, the servant had, uh, of the house had, had, an, had, an evil, had an evil spirit was there, and, and at some point the evil spirit left the man's house and, 
It went about, you know, and but it couldn't find any rest. And and the evil spirit said, I'm, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to where I came from. Found the house when he got back. The house was all good and clean and everything, but nothing else had been replaced in it. Just He just cleaned it out, but didn't replace it. And then Jesus talked about it. He said, well, that, that man, uh, well, the, the evil spirit brought back, I think it may have been six or seven more evil spirits, worse than he was. And the man found himself in a worse situation than he initially was in the first place. Well, I think the, the point, at least what I want to try to convey here is the fact that if we, we, we can flee one thing, and, and we can, we can, but if we don't replace it with something good, as, as Paul is telling Timothy here, you know, you know, we flee one thing and pursue, we need to pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, and patience, and, and, and gentleness, and, so that we can become better people, different people, people that can truly uh, be ready um, for the Lord's work. Well, the next verse, he says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We're fighting a spiritual battle. This is not a, this is not a physical fight. We're not, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're, this is a spiritual warfare. And Paul gives a good example of what that looks like in, in, in Ephesians the, just chapter 6. Paul uses uh, kind of physical things in which that a man would uh, use in a, in a physical you know, warfare, but he's, he's talking about a spiritual battle. And so in Ephesians 6, in verse number 14, I'm just going to read this. He says, stand, therefore, stand, be ready, you know, get, get, your, get your foundation. When it comes to the spiritual fight, don't be swayed by uh, every wind of doctrine. Have engaged your, your waist with truth. Well, that's the gird meaning like putting on your belt, get your belt on, but you, you got your belt is of, of truth. Uh, having put on the breast breastplate of righteousness. Well, the, the breast is this area of our body is very vulnerable, it's, it's big, it's wide. And, and therefore, we need to put something up to protect it. Well, the, bless, the breast plate, uh, Paul is saying here, is righteousness. You know, we're not putting on a physical breast plate, but we're going to put on righteousness, doing what is right, doing God's will in all that we say and all that we do. Having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So as our, as our feet go places, be willing to share the, the gospel. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, a shield, shield to, to block out, keep those things away from you. Well, our shield is our faith. When we have a strong faith in God. We, we don't let things bother us. Don't look, when, when somebody throw those things at us, they just fall right down because we got a shield and our shield is our faith. Take the helmet of salvation. Helmet, another very most vulnerable place, the head. Well, put on the helmet, and this helmet is salvation. Well, when we trust in God, give our lives over to him, there's nothing that's going to save us if we don't give ourselves to the Lord through his saving grace and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says, in the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, we need to have the word in everything that we do. Then it says, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Well, this is a spiritual war that we're in. It's not a physical battle, spiritual in nature. Then Paul goes on, he said, I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this command without spot, without being without spot, being blameless until the Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Well, Paul urges him in this here text, and that word, that word urge right there is more of a, it's, it's, it's a command, it's, it's a charge. Paul is charging Timothy in the sight of God to, to stand firm and to make sure that, you know, you're doing all that God would have you to do. Then he goes on, he said, well, let me tell you, this is who you're trusting in. 
which he will manifest in his own time. He said, at some point, God will make himself known, Jesus Christ. He will show himself. He will manifest, but it's in, it's in his time. We don't know when. We don't know when the Lord will return, but he will. He who is the blessed and the only potentate, the potentate, that word potentate, potentate here is the way Paul is using it when he says the king of kings and, and lord of lords is that he's given a great sense of reverence to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He, he's saying he is the, he's the master of the universe. He is the ruler of all things of this entire universe. There's nothing that escapes him. Whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Jesus Christ has is to have honor and all everlasting power. Amen. God is great. God is wonderful. Well, he goes on and he says, I command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. I guess Paul understood. He had probably seen rich men in his life and he knew how they acted. And sometimes you can have rich men. Now, this is not all rich people, but there, there are people that they, they can get so much money that they just think they're above everyone else. Paul understood that. He's, he's evidently has seen it. He's, he's experienced it. You know, Paul was really a, a associated with many of those of the, of the elite of the Jewish class. He, he, he was taught um, by those in which that was well-known, probably well-positioned in society. And he knew that some of them might have acted in a very arrogant way. So he, so he tells Timothy here, you know, you tell those folks that are rich in this present day not to be haughty. And so that transfers on down to us today. For those that are in the church that are well positioned uh, financially, don't think that you're better than anyone else. We're all our brethren. You know, just how good and how great it is for, for brethren to dwell together in unity. We're, we're all the same. When one is in need, well, you help the other, and then we all have the same. I remember the first century church and how that uh, when they were many were being baptized thousands at a time, people were selling their goods and their possession so that those that had need, they, they had what they, they needed. So no one was really going without. But he goes on, he tells um, Ty, uh, Timothy to uh, let those people know not to trust in uncertain riches. Well, material wealth is, 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 is really uncertain. Um, but he said, but, but trust in the, in the living God. You know, Jesus said at one time, the, the things uh, that, that we store away, moss and, and rust, will corrupt those things. Uh, you know, if you let money lay around for long enough, it'll just kind of begin to almost, especially paper money, just deteriorate, man. And then for those things that, that we can leave that we, we might think of as well, the digital money, well, but you, you won't take anything with you. Uh, Job made that very, very clear in Job chapter 1 and verse number 21. Uh, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return to this, to this earth. So uh, no matter what you have, on the day that you die, you leave it all to someone else to do whatever they will to do with it. But he says, but, but, but the living God, he gives to us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good. I'm talking about those that have. Uh, talking about the rich. Let them do good. That they be rich in good works. Ready to give. Willing to share. Storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. That they may lay hold on eternal life. That's what this whole battle is all about. The goal and the plan is to one day lay hold on eternal life. Well, what good is... Um, you know, having all the money in the world and, and you lose your soul. Jesus told one about that as well. You know, it, it really means nothing if we lose our souls. Then he tells Timothy, oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust. All these things that, that Timothy been told, you, you, you take care, you guard. Don't let no one make you believe something different, which Earlier in this chapter, he talked about false teachers. And now he's kind of coming back to that. 
you avoid those people, you know. At one time, I think Paul told Timothy just to just flee, you know, those that are actually, uh, you know, that taught that uh, godliness was a, a means of, of gain. Again, that that's not that's not true. Uh, you know, there are there are people that are faithful people, and then we can we can see in Scripture, Paul was a godly man. He wrote pretty much half the um, in the New Testament. Can't say he had a whole lot. Found himself in prison a lot of the time, beaten, shipwrecked. Well, uh, you would kind of think Paul had been a very godly man. Didn't seem to gain much. As a matter of fact, if you listen to what the way Paul tell it, he he probably had more before he became a, a Christian. He gave all that up because he understood that was a greater thing to be gained, which was eternal life. But he says, avoid the, the profane and the idle babbling in contradiction of what is falsely called knowledge. Yeah, someone was actually considering all the things that they were teaching knowledge. Well, well, earlier in this whole chapter, Paul said they know nothing. They really had no idea what truth was. They didn't even know the truth. And, and those, by professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Well, I want you to look at this, and because one of the things I'm going to assign to your homework in just a moment. We're going to, I'm wrapping up now. Um, by way of homework, I want you to go ahead and do the questions in your in your booklet, you know, complete questions 11 through 15 on page 36. But I got a lot of feedback from last week's study, and I think that uh, people enjoy just the, the interaction, people sharing. And they'll be and they would and they said they was they was helped by things that other individuals said. So what I want to do is, um, for this coming week is for you to uh, come prepared to that class to tell Tell the class of a time when you had to leave or when you had to flee or a place or a situation to ensure that you kept your uh, Christian faith intact. You just, you had to leave it. Tell, tell yeah, I'm sure we've had situations like that. Then tell of what you, tell of what you did to help you avoid getting into that situation again. So think about that. Tell, I want you to tell of that time. That, that's going to be the, the class discussion. We want to hear from individuals because uh, I think we can help one another to tell about how we're fighting against Satan, how we're beating Satan, Satan down. And we need to share with one another what, what we're doing. Now, sometimes we don't always, you know, sometimes we fall. We don't, we don't get it right. So, so another part of that, I want you to, if for some reason you feel like, well, I don't know if I have one of those to share. I think we all do, but Here's another side of that. If you have to come prepared to tell of a time when you wish you had left or fled a place or a situation to assure you kept your Christian faith intact, but you didn't, then tell of what you plan to do to help avoid that type of place or situation in the future. I know one of the things that I, I, I struggle with at times and I, how I tell you how I'm working with it I, on this side of it, you know, something that I wish I'd do better is that, you know, I, I've been driving an automobile for probably almost, I don't know, 50 years. And I, and I'm, and I just drive and I just, I think I'm a safe driver. I, I'm constantly on, I'm on the road and I just, I'm driving along and I think I'm following safe distance and all the, all the right things, but um, recently my wife has kind of just brought it to my attention about certain places around the city where the speed limit is is, is, is posted at posted at whatever the speed limit is that is, is posted, and there are times I'm I'm exceeding that, and that's more, more often than I than I really care to admit, but it's the truth. And but I, but I think that I'm safe, but nevertheless, even though I'm driving safely. There are things in which that we need to follow as Christians that that, that falls in line with God. I mean, uh, following, you know, following the rules and, and the laws of the land. You know, God asks us to ensure that we do that. 
And so what I've so what, what I so so I'm I, I'm gonna do better. I'm not I'm not done well in actually abiding by those laws. I'm not. And I've had to ask God to forgive me. I had to repent of that. And I don't know who might have would have saw me out there. You know, I have I was not reckless in, in any way. That's not what I'm saying. But the fact is, if the speed limit said 35 and I was running 40 and I was exceeding the speed limit, I broke the law. That's what I'm getting at. But what I plan to do now, what I'm already doing, I look at the, I look at the, I look at the posted signs as I drive. My wife, she made me aware of that. She said, "Have you not? Don't you look at those signs?" <laughs> I said, "Well, I, yeah, I think I, I." And I thought in a lot of places around the city the speed limit was 45, and she said they're 35. And I started. I've been looking more lately. There are more 35 miles per hour speed limits around the city than now 45. They might have changed that somewhere. I don't know where, but nevertheless, I've been at fault for exceeding that more than once, more than twice, more than a few times. And today, what I'm doing, I'm working hard at that. I'm looking at the speed limit signs that drive. And when I look at them, I make sure that I regulate my speed. I want to I be a good citizen in every way of my life. I want to be a good Christian. I want to do what God tells me to do. I want to do what, what's right in the sight of man as well. God tells us that. So that's something in which that I've, I'm, 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 I'm it's helping me to avoid that type of situation. I've never gotten, I hadn't gotten a ticket, but thank the Lord. And I'm, now I'm going to just do right. So I shouldn't get ever get that ticket either. So, but I want you to look about, look, look, look at that. But I, this, this is the one I really want you to, 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 if, if you can, come prepared to tell us that time when you, you had to leave and you did the right thing, you left, you got out, you knew you was in the wrong place. That was not a situation for you. Because you want to make sure you kept your Christian faith intact. You didn't want to start searing your conscience in such a way that the next time it got easier and easier. Then tell us about what it is that you did to just help you to just keep avoiding that, that situation in the future so that you didn't get yourself in there in that situation again i want everyone to do that i don't i don't i ain't gonna be asking you about these questions in the book i might ask maybe one question but this is what i want all of everybody can do this and i want different people to provide some of their the things that they're doing in their own lives i believe you can help someone else as you're helping yourself and god's going to be pleased with all of us we're going to get ready to close out at this time I'm going to ask that we, let me stop sharing. We can get ready to close out in a word of prayer. Let us together bow. Father God, we, we love you. We adore you. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your patience, your long suffering, just how you waited on us and how, Father God, for, for so long, we do things that goes against what you would have us to do, but thank you for giving us the space and the time to, to come to the knowledge and the understanding of what's right and turning our lives to do it. Thank you, Lord God, for helping my wife to help me to see the things that I can do better, and I will do better, Lord God, and just on how I drive along the streets in which you bless us to drive on. Oh, Lord God, we love you. We adore you. I pray and ask Father God that you help us all to look to improve our lives to, to such a, in, to, in such a way that we might glorify, magnify your name and that it'll have an impact on all of those that are around us. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Strengthen us where we stand in need. It's in your son, Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. If the Lord's will, we look forward to seeing you all on the Wednesday night call at 7.30. And uh, again, come prepare. I want to hear some different people share, you, share what you're doing how God is blessing you and taking care of you in your present life. God bless you. God keep you until we see you again. Goodbye.